Hello, everybody. My name is Catalyst. Um, I'm the world record holder for this category. I feel like I need to say that so you guys know that I can play well sometimes. You're not going to see it tonight, but I'll try my best. With me, I have some wonderful commentators. First... Hey, everyone. I'm Hypersomniac. I also run Elden Ring and DS3. Fantastic. In the middle... Hello, I am Hazeblade. I also run Elden Ring as well as Resident Evil. And last but not least... Hey, guys. I'm Spicy. I am also a fellow Elden Ring enjoyer and runner. <laughs> awesome. Well... We also have a packed house here behind me. Guys, are you ready for some Elden Ring? <laughs> Guys, if you're ready for some Elden Ring, give me a hell yeah! <laughs> That's what I like to hear. <laughs> Not putting any pressure on myself at all here. Okay, so I believe we had an incentive for the character name, so this would be the best time to know the result of that. All right, let me go ahead and... Track that down. Okay, here we go. Okay, so it looks like for the character name, which raised $27,745.89 in total, the winning pick is going to be none other than Maidenless. Aww. All right. <laughs> Good choice. Oh, well, guys, I don't know, because if you look like we do, I don't know if this is a guy who's going to end up being made unless. Uh, all right, that being said, uh, I'm going to choose a starting class, Astrologer. I can also choose a keepsake here at the beginning, um, which is like a gift, essentially, an extra starting item. I'll start with the Lance Between Rune. I'll talk a little bit about both those choices later as they become relevant in the run. And uh, yeah, the time can basically start once I skip the first cutscene. Uh, then we're going to be greeted by amazingly optimized about 15 second black screen before the game can begin. And then we'll get right into it. So cutscene's going to start, and I'll skip it in three, two, one, go. Good luck, Kata. Thank you. <laughs> So immediately when the run starts, I'm going to perform the first trick of the run already. And while picking up this finger in order to be able to open these doors, I was blocking. While I am blocking, the pickup animation, whenever I pick up an item, gets cancelled early and I can start sprinting earlier. Another thing you see me do immediately is jump to the left instead of taking, to the, taking the stairs. Elden Ring is cool in that uh, it has a dedicated jump button over the Souls game, so you're going to see that used a lot. And we're going to be approaching the, the first boss fight here. As you can see, he jumps over, and there he is. And I'm going to get stuck, and nope, I refuse to fight this guy, so we die. Great fight. That was a good fight, yeah. <laughs> so the first boss that you see in this game is kind of similar to something like Sekiro, where essentially, uh, no matter if you defeat it or not, uh, you're going to end up being here in the stranded graveyard, and that's where the run, or I should say the game, really begins. Uh, I received two items. I received the Flask of Crimson and Cerulean Tears. Those are the items that will be replenishing my resources, which you can see in the top left. Health power in the red. FP focus points or mana in the blue. And then the last thing that you see is stamina, which is green. Now, because today is leg day, I'm going to do some squats here on the elevator while we're going up. <laughs> And then I'm going to make sure, again, to jump out of the elevator a little bit sooner and finally enter the overworld. The beautiful looking limb grave. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to activate or light this first grace. Graces are essentially the equivalents of bonfires. They are sort of checkpoints at which you will respawn if you die. Or you can also fast travel to them later. Right from there, I'm going to head over to the next grace and basically be continuing to... Um, Towards the first legacy dungeon, so the overworld of this game is essentially made up of uh, big open-ended areas and also legacy dungeons, which are sort of like closed-off spaces with usually very important bosses at the end. Um, what you saw me do there, whenever I'm going to be, well, almost whenever I'm going to be running uphill, I'll try to be jumping because that's slightly faster than running on flat ground. Another cool thing that you can see is while I'm sprinting, there, there are three ways to move in this game or three speeds. Uh, walking, jogging, and sprinting. I'm sprinting right now. But because I'm not in combat, you can see that the stamina bar is actually not, deple not depleting at all, which is really cool. Uh, uh, for any action to be performed, at least one stamina point needs to be present. So 
quick word about the category that we're running. We are running all remembrances. What that means? Essentially, this game has 15 remembrance bosses, which drop a remembrance item. Uh, they're kind of an equivalent of a boss soul, and you can think about this category as something like all major bosses, essentially. There will be some other boss fights as well, but uh, we'll get to those later that are, you know, necessary to be done in order to actually reach the remembrance bosses. So at this grace, I'm gonna rest, and well, we are maidenless no more, because here is Melina, and she offers us an accord. And Accord is a pretty popular car here in the US, so I'm gonna accept, obviously. <laughs> I'm told to treat it with respect. Um, and here's my Accord. It's Torrent. It's probably like the most overpowered item in this entire run. <laughs> and I'm gonna head over immediately up the hill here. The optimal way to move on Torrent is basically to keep on repeatedly spamming Sprint uh, with a little bit of a delay. But I'm also now in combat, so I need to take care that my stamina doesn't get depleted. On the way, I pick up the Golden Seed. The Golden Seeds will increase the amount of charges that I have on my healing items. That's going to come in handy later. I'm going to jump up here and I'm going to pick another Grace. So, so far we've seen three, picked all three. This one's going to be important because not only will I come back here later, but I will also heavily be, I will be using it to perform a very, very important glitch. Speaking of very important glitches, I'm going to perform one of the bread and butter glitches in just a moment called Pegasus. What I'm going to do is I'm going to approach a ledge and then I'm going to jump off the horse and quit out. I quit out basically when the game registers that I jumped off the horse, but before the horse is... Uh, uh, before the horse vanishes, right? It's going to look kind of like this. This is called Torrent Storage and I'll be doing that repeatedly through the run. Um, quitting out means essentially returning back to the menu. Now what ends up happening is Torrent is going to spawn right next to me. Here, he's chilling. Next thing I'll do is I'll walk off this ledge and now Torrent, uh, with the proper setup, is going to spawn in front of me and fall off. So as you can see, treating him with respect is, uh, yeah, it didn't last for too long. <laughs> and he's gone. So now he's ripped. But what actually ends up happening is that I'm going to run on this bridge and oh no, there's a hole here. This is dangerous, guys. Oh wait, what's happening? <laughs> yeah, so... Uh, you can see that Skyrim is the spiritual predecessor to Elden Ring in this regard. So what ends up happening is when I walk off a ledge under which there is a kill plane and I throw Torrent through him, or through it rather, he is killed. But whenever any entity in this game is killed with a kill plane, its gravity is disabled, right? So imagine that an enemy falls into a kill plane, its gravity is going to get disabled. But that's not problematic because the only way to respawn an enemy is to reload the entire area. However, Torrent can be respawned by simply using a, a, a flask charge. And that way, when I resurrect him and sit on him, I am now riding Torrent who has gravity disabled. So I take another grace here. I'll be coming back later, and I'm going to be heading to the Divine Tower of Liurnia here. Also, here's a balloon, and there are many ways to destroy a balloon, but... Oh, we missed. That's unfortunate. There we go, that's better. I think the balloon didn't really envision that a dude on a flying horse would be punching it down, so <laughs> that's uh, yeah, pretty good. Now, when it comes to Pegasus, um, there are some important things, some important caveats. It's very easy to gain height because I can essentially just kind of slide onto any kind of a surface, but losing height is quite problematic. The only way I can really do it, almost the only way, is to jump. But if I do not land on flat ground, I'm going to stay suspended in air and I'm basically going to be soft lock until I quit out or if I, uh, you know, warp to a previous grace. So I don't want to be doing that. However, it is important to reach flat ground usually because it is not possible to dismount Torrent when he's midair. I'm going to gain some extra height here. And as I was saying, I'm heading to the Divine Tower of Lyurnia. This is because there is a remembrance boss in this game called Lich Dragon 40 Sacks. And the only way to reach him is to progress a quest line uh, involving Rani the Witch. And there are a lot of steps to it. However, one of the items that is necessary to approach this boss is called the Curse Mark of Death. But this Curse Mark of Death, which is located in this Divine Tower of Liurnia, actually can be approached and picked up even without uh, continuing the quest line if we get to the Divine Tower. And with a flying horse, that's, you know, kind of easy to do. So I'm going to touch this pillar over here to be able to load the next area. And then making sure that I avoid any of these other pillar pillars which would deload it, I'm going to continue running in a straight line towards here. Now we can get one quick donation in Muffin. 
All right, sounds good. Well, we only have $44,000 left to go to be able to unlock that Elden Ring Pizza Swap Champions. And so the donation I have here to read is $100 from Slippery Anvil that says, one extra large champion pizza, please. Well, just got to raise some more money for a good cause and it will be served fresh and hot. <laughs> so this is what I was talking about when I said that it is pretty easy to be gaining height. I'm going to be abusing these rocks here. Now, here's one kind of a slippery moment. There we go. And I'm going to make sure to get enough height to get on top of the bridge, but not too much height, because if I ended up being too high up, I would not be able to get on the flat ground. So there we go. Now we are at the Divine Tower. We're going to open these massive stone doors with our bare hands, because obviously the Giga Chair that we are, that makes a lot of sense. Now, another great thing about Torrent, uh, when his gravity is disabled, is that there are areas in this game where riding on the horse is impossible. However, if you have Pegasus activated, uh, the game will not force you off the horse. So I'm going to ride up this elevator. I'm going to favorite the Stormhill Shack Grace so I can uh, access it very easily later on. I'm going to also pop the two runes that I got. So the one that I got from the balloon, that was 2k. And the item that I started with, the Lands Between Rune, which is 3k. And I'm going to end up with 5,000 runes, as in runes as currency. You can see that on the bottom right. That currency allows me to level up my character, purchase items, and um, all that good stuff. So here's the curse mark. I'm going to pick it up and immediately warp back to the last grace that we took. Going through loading screen disables Torrent, or I should say Pegasus. I'm going to rest at the grace again. Melina is going to come back, and she's going to transport us to kind of like the central hub of this game, the round table hold. So we talk to her, and in the round table hold, I'll do two things, well, three. First, I'll rest at the uh, table there, which basically updates my grace. I'll level up 10 strength so I can use the shield that I'll be purchasing. Then I'll be purchasing a couple more items. I'll get uh, to that later when it becomes a little bit more relevant. And then I'm going to perform another bread and butter glitch of this game. And that is actually the moose, uh, sorry, the, the wrong warp. So we get two points of strength. Then I'm going to purchase the items, and I'm going to use the item Memory of Grace to return to the last grace. It's kind of like a dark sign equivalent, essentially. So I get the shield, I get a scimitar, summoning bell, wolves, then I return. And at the same time, I open up the map and warp to a different grace than my last one. And what ends up happening is you see that I spawned somewhere completely else. This is because I just wrong warped. What ends up happening is two warps are activated at the same time, and the game has two variables to keep track of. The first one is the area that you need to get warped to. That one gets updated correctly, and I got warped back to Liurnia instead of just being warped back to the round table hold. However, there is also a spawn point variable that the game needs to keep track of, and that's where the magic lies. The game doesn't actually know which spawn point of the area to use, so it simply defaults to the first one on the list. And the first one on the list is a little bit closer to this teleporter in Purified Ruins that takes me to the main gate here of the Raya Lucaria um, Academy, which is like the first legacy dungeon that we'll be visiting. And it needs to be open first. So I take the grace so I can come back to it later. And now we're going to go pick up the key to open the, to open the gate. Uh, if you didn't really understand fully what, you know, how the wrong world works, don't worry. Uh, we'll be doing it again and I'll... Uh, I'll have another crack at ex, uh, explaining it a little bit better. While I'm heading to the Academy Glintstone Key, which is by a dragon called Smarag, it's going to be an epic boss fight coming up, uh, maybe. I'm going to do a little detour, and I'm going to take the Temple Quarters Grace here. Again, this is going to come in handy much later in the run, when I'll come back here. And then I'm going to head over to the key, which is yeah, not, not hidden too well. It's like right next to the entrance, basically. And as I said, there's a big dragon protecting it, which, yeah, he's kind of scary, but he doesn't do his job very well. So I can just run under him, yoink the key, and then quit out. When I quit out, the enemies actually get reset to their default state. And as such, he's not gonna be, I'm not going to be in combat. And that allows me to open the map again and warp back to the grace that um, I took in front of the gate. So goodbye, dragon. It was nice meeting you. From here, I'm going to enter the academy. And actually, I'm not going to be fighting like 
the main boss here in Ally yet. And that's why I'm going to take the next grace as well, so I can come back here later. We'll be coming back here twice, actually. Now the goal is to get to the Volcano Manor. Volcano Manor is a legacy dungeon that's a little bit further in the game. But the reason we want to get there is because the main boss of the dungeon, Rykard, is basically a gimmick boss. So we can actually kill him even without any level ups. I'm going to perform another torrent storage here, and we'll be flying very shortly. So I want to get to Rykard so I can kill him, and then use the souls, which, or rather runes, <laughs> which I'll get a lot of, to do my initial level ups for the weapon that, that I'll be using for this run. Another important thing that I kind of forgot to mention is that I'm playing on the patch 1.02, which is three patches down um, from the current patch. Current patch is 1.05. And this is to basically undo some balance changes that the developers have made, and also to have access to certain glitches. For example, Pegasus is patched in current patch. All right, so I'm going to summon Torrent again, and we're going to fly around the academy instead of going through it. And there's a water wheel that I can take down here, right? And in order to actually catch the first cycle, I'm going to try to go as far to the right as possible of this area in order to load the area as late as possible and then be able to catch the cycle in the water wheel. So area loaded. I jump on flat ground so I can get off the horse. Get on the second water wheel. I'm going to re-equip the shield for the better one because it has much better stats for blocking. And then I'm just going to get abducted. So nice. Yeah, this is the second intentional death in this run. Now, this enemy is called the Virgin Abductor, but of course, such foolish tactics will not work on a Giga Chat character such as the one that we have. So, <laughs> what ends up happening instead... What ends up happening instead is we actually get transported to the Volcano Matter, to basically a place where, like, the broken abductors get discarded to. So from here, uh, I can actually jump to the right and basically enter the Legacy Dungeon proper. And this is really good. This is a massive skip because we don't have to go through uh, Altus Plateau and we don't have to go through Mount Gelmir whatsoever, which are two pretty big areas that you would have to navigate through in order to get here. While I'm here, I'm going to be picking up some items. I'm going to be picking up Somber Smithing Stones, which are uh, one type of an upgrade material in this game, of which there are two. Regular Smithing Stones and these Somber Smithing Stones. The Somber Smithing Stones are really good because you only need one per level, and the Somber Smithing Stone upgradable weapons level to plus 10, while the normal Smithing Stones level to plus 25, and you need to use several of them in order to advance one level to basically get um, kind of equivalent power. Snake goes kind of crazy there. So I get the Somber Smithing Stone 6. Here I'm going to get Somber Smithing Stone 5. And then I'm going to progress towards the Somber Smithing Stone 7 here through the Volcano Manor. So what you also saw me equip was a summon. So if you've not played this game and you've played maybe the previous Souls games, in this game you can actually summon some companions. Uh, optimally, if the pizza swap uh, incentive gets met, we'll only get to use it at the very end of the run. So I won't really talk about it that much yet. Here I'm going to perform a small skip. Well, small skip. It looks small, but it's actually pretty massive. I'm going to jump up here. There we go. Nice. Very nice. Yeah, that, that skip can be annoying. That Ooh. skip is really, really hard because you have to be very specifically positioned when you make that jump to get onto the ledge. If you miss it, it's only about 10 seconds, but it is still substantial when you're going for a PB. Mm. Thank you very much for the praise. That feels pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so basically it's allowed me to just kind of, instead of running around the manor and taking a shortcut and just dropping down, it allowed me to get up there very, very, very easily. I picked up two items. I picked up the Smithing Stone level 7, and I picked up the Royal Knight's Resolve. That's an Ash of War, and we'll get to what it does later, but it's super important for this run. Now, because we got abducted and we got transported to a different area, we are in a trapped state, which means I need to rest at a grace. Now, in order to be able to warp. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to perform another wrong warp, but this time to the Stormhill Shack Grace that we took earlier. What you're going to see is I'm going to spawn out of bounds like this, and I'm going to do another quit out. This is because the default position, or the first spawn point on the list, is actually out of bounds. When I load in the area, the game doesn't store any position that I have, right? Because I don't spawn on flat ground. I spawn midair. 
So upon the next quit out, what ends up happening is the game takes me to the last area where I had the stored position, which is the Volcano Manor. But again, loses track of which spawn point to use, so it defaults to the first one on the list. This is huge because I'm combining two different types of wrong warping. And that allows me to wrong warp within areas that do not have a grace, right? I don't need to warp to a specific grace in order to wrong warp there. And that is crucial because there are only certain areas where the first like, spawn point on the list is beneficial. And there are also even less areas where you would have a grace to kind of, you know, use to wrong warp to. So we're going to be using that a lot. From here, from the front of Volcano Manor, which, to which I had to wrong warp because it's actually locked off while I'm inside the manor, I set up another Pegasus, and I'm going to head to Rykard. As I said, that's the main Remembrance boss here in this Legacy Dungeon. And the fight can be kind of rough because I only have the base Vigor, which is not a lot. You can see my health bar is not very big, and we're kind of like in a, you know, in an area that you're supposed to approach later. So a lot of things will kind of one-shot me. This Pegasus allows me to get all the way to the end of the Volcano Manor here to this teleporter, which kind of teleports me to the heart of the manor. And I'm going to be taking this Grace just in case I die, which wouldn't even be that bad because then we'll get to, uh, we would get to hear the legendary line by now. But <laughs> we'll see if that happens. We'll see if that happens. So I'll pick up the Serpent Hunter. The Serpent Hunter is the weapon that I'll be using for uh, this fight. It's basically the gimmick weapon you're supposed to use. I'm going to be doing jump R2s, that's the highest DPS that I can do, followed by some L2s as well, which are the special attacks, which look like this, and they can stagger the snake. And they can be followed with an uppercut for a lot of damage. I'm going to follow up with a jump R2 again, and then see what the snake does. Here's a grab, I'll roll that to the left, punish with another jump R2. I'll try to go closer to bait a melee attack, then jump backwards to dodge it. I'll try to do it again, there we go. One more for a stagger. While he's staggered, I'm going to do a jump bar too, followed by another L2. That's going to stagger him again and allow me to yet again do another jump bar too. All right, another grab. We saw that before. Try to bait a melee attack. Perfect. Do it again. Okay, so phase one done. That was pretty smooth. Very nice. I'm going to drink again so I can use L2. It's almost like this weapon's made for this boss. <laughs> <laughs> Second phase gets a lot trickier because there's something called the Inferno stage. Basically, certain combos that Rackard can do progress the Inferno stage, and then he kind of just starts uh, sending skulls everywhere, and I have to like run around for over 30 seconds being unable to do anything. I opened up with an R2 and L2 because he did an attack that I can punish with an L2 on reaction. This is a jump attack, or rather, an attack that I can jump over. Here's a stab. I can punish that with another jump R2. This is already a very good start to the fight. Let's see what he does now. Quick stab, double roll. You can see that the sky got darker, or more red. This is because the first combo already progressed the Inferno phase. If he does another combo that progresses it, uh, he's gonna activate it. But he's pretty low on HP now, so we should be maybe okay. Let's see what happens. Now that he's low HP, he can follow up with snake attacks, which he didn't do. Another quick stab. And he's gonna go for Inferno now. And during this, I can just spam R2s. One more. Okay, no Firestone beneath me, and Rykard is dead. Nice. Very nice Very fight. Very clean. Cool. Well, you could say that we uh, devoured the boss together. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that, that was good. I'm pretty happy about that fight. Uh, it got a little bit scary at the end because he started activating the Inferno phase and like Firestorm started coming from the ground, but fortunately we were not standing in one of them. So as you can see, we came back to the Academy now with uh, 130,000 runes on our bank accounts, which is quite nice. I'm going to set up Pegasus again, but this time I'm not going to head towards the Academy, but instead head backwards. Again, me walking off the ledge like that sets up Torrent right next to me when I spawn, and he's going to fall into the, uh, into the death plane, allow me to activate Pegasus. You can probably see that if I actually pan the camera. Let's see. Yes. Boom. Everyone close your eyes. <laughs> yeah, sorry. 
There's uh, there's gonna be another heartbreaking moment later in the run, but uh, yeah, just a little foreshadowing. All right, so from here, I'm gonna fly to the four belfries. This area is really good because, first of all, wrong warping to the grace that's there allows me to get closer to Ichi, which is a blacksmith uh, located like down there in that direction. I'll have to visit him shortly. And also, it has several teleporters, which basically serve kind of as like self-closed spaces uh, that can be viewed as like previews of another area or, or like of future areas that you're going to get to. However, that can actually be, be abused quite heavily. But for now, what I'll do is I'll get this imbued, so, uh, imbued key that will allow me to activate the portal before, uh, later. And I'm going to get to this grace. I'll do a small glitch here where I basically make sure to activate the grace as I'm facing away from it. That makes my character spin first. And then during the animation, I can actually open the map and warp. So I don't have to wait out the entire animation. It's just a small glitch, but it saves, you know, like about two, three seconds every time you do it. So now we've come back to the Stormhill Shack race, not to actually uh, glitch out the game and do some wrong warps, but do a little detour to the Warmaster Shack here. Normally there's an NPC here called Bernal, and if you don't progress his quest line, which we didn't do because it's slow and also useless, when Rykar dies, he dies as well, which is nice because his weapon will be very, very useful for a glitch later on, much later down the line in the run, but... Um, yeah, it, it, it's, it's a groundbreaking skip, and it's absolutely worth it to take that small detour. I come back to the first step, um, Grace, that we took at the very beginning of the run, and I'm going to head eastward in order to get transported to Kaelid. Now, Kaelid I need to visit because there's Radan. I'm not going to be fighting him yet, because first of all, I have nothing to fight him with, and second of all, even if I did, I would be quite weak. But I want to get the Grace there. The way I will get transported to Kaelid is actually this cursed chest. Normally in the network test, when I tried the network test, there was an item here. And in my casual playthrough, I just kind of strolled here. I wasn't even watching what the chest was doing. And I just got ensnared like this and transported. And it surprised me quite a bit. I'm sure some of you that have played the game maybe also were in for a surprise. Yeah, I think that's definitely a common experience getting teleported <laughs> all the way over here. <laughs> I was actually waiting for the, the mimics from Dark Souls to make an appearance in this. And when I saw that, I was like, I wonder if this is what they were looking for with that because it, uh, it was definitely surprising. Yeah, I know me and a lot of other people definitely attacked some uh, chests. Oh, yeah. Just to check. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> for sure. I mean, if you've played Dark Souls before, that's kind of a habit that you, you know, you are basically uh, grown, to, grown to do. So we get transported. It's basically the same kind of principle as the virgin abductor that took us to the Volcano Manor. And from here, I'm going to head towards the Celia Town. Now, Celia Town is basically the area right before the Church of the Plague, which has the grace that I want to take, to which I'm going to get to later in order to fight Radan. But Celia um, has a seal here that you need to open, but that's slow. So I'm going to do some parkour here. I pick up the seed that's on the way. Again, this increases the amount of charges on my flasks. And let's see if I can get this. All right. Cool. That was pretty smooth. Very, Very nice. nice. That's harder than it looked. Yeah. Yeah. Some more mountain goating. If we cannot fly, we can jump at least. So instead of going around and uh, navigating around the boulders there, I can just jump up this mountain. That's very cool. And this is the Church of the Plague. It doesn't look very nice, but I mean, I guess that's what you get with Church of the Plague. <laughs> <laughs> and here I'll also pick up a tear. Tears increase the potency of my flasks. So that means I'll get more uh, HP recharged. And then I'm going to rest at this grace. Enemies being very respectful there. And because I'll be wrong warping, I'm going to go ahead and level some stats. So I make sure to get 24 faith. I make sure to get 20 intelligence. One second, I'm just going to wrong warp to the full bear freeze here. And I make sure to get 20 intelligence. I make sure to get 24 faith. I make sure to get 12 strength. I make sure to get 16 minds. And then the rest goes into vigor. Vigor gives me extra HP. The Faith and Intelligence requirements are for the Sword of Night and Flame, which will be the main weapon used during this run. Also the laser sword, butt chest. <laughs> <laughs> and um, the mine, the 60 mine is important, so I can use five, uh, I can use the sword five times without having to drink. And then I wrong warp to the full bear freeze again. The reason I needed to spend my runes there is because the Memory of Grace item 
takes us to the last grace, but also just like Dark Sign from from Dark Souls, it deprives of it deprives us of all the runes that we have. So that's why I needed to level there. After that, I use the Remembrance item to get some more runes, 50k actually, and I'll be using that to. Okay, I messed up the Torrent Storage Shield. Let's do that again. I'll uh, I'll be using that to purchase the upgrade materials from Ichi and also to upgrade the the weapon that's gonna be. It's going to be coming up shortly. While I do that, I'm going to set up Pegasus here because I'll be getting to the Carrier Manor to pick up the item, uh, the Sword of Night and Flame. And I'll also be taking the Grace by Ichi because I'll be coming back to him later. While that's happening, I think this is a perfect time to read some donations, Muffin. All right. Well, we're getting a lot of love coming in from so many donors. And we are just about $31,000 away from being able to make that pizza swap the champion's incentive. So keep those donations coming in and make sure you put it towards that incentive. Yeah. You don't want to miss that. And I don't want to miss that. <laughs> And for donations, we're starting off with a big one. We have $1,801 from the fifth mat. Thank you so much, dude. They say, I can't imagine a better game and better runners to close out this marathon for a really worthwhile humanitarian cause. With love from the modding community and former Speed Souls basement. Yeah, thank you so much. The modders for these games, for all the From Software games, do an incredible amount of work. And not only do they create so all kinds of randomizers that create incredible replayability for these games, they also make tools that allow us to make like high quality production videos and everything like that. So super, super thankful to all the modding people that are always keen to like help out whenever we reach out. Super great. All right, so here I jump into this uh, secret, secret room. I'm going to also do a small glitch to open up the chest quicker and pick up the item. So that was the Sword of Night and Flame. And then I immediately wore back to the round table holds because I'm going to go to Hugh. Hugh is another blacksmith, and not only can he upgrade my weapon, but more importantly, he can apply the Royal Knights of Zolf Ash of War that we picked up in the Volcano Manor to the scimitar that I purchased earlier in the run. Right after that, I'm going to go back to the Lirna Highway South. And from here, I'm going to use the remaining souls that I have for some bigger level ups for HP. And then, if you remember, I wrong warped to this bonfire or grace before, but I can also just run down here behind this rock and do another wrong warp, which will take me to a different place. This is because, because you can imagine the map basically be divided into different tiles, and each tile counts as a different area, and a different area is going to have a different set of spawn points. So if I just run down here and do the wrong warp, it's going to take me directly to the start of Leonia right behind the Stonewell Castle Legacy Dungeon. This is super useful because I can essentially just backtrack um, to the final boss of the dungeon and I don't have to go through it at all, which is, which is really, really nice. You also saw me equip a talisman. talisman talismans um, provide you with all kinds of different bonuses in this game. This one is picked up right next to the Curse Mark of Death that we got from the Divine Tower earlier. They're basically the same item, or I should say they are on the same corpse, so you pick them up at the same time. Uh, the Talisman is good because it adds five levels of intelligence, which makes me not only feel smart, but most importantly, gets me to over 24, which is necessary to be able to use the Sword of Night and Flame. I set up another Pegasus. As you can see, this is indeed the glitch that is used a lot. Uh, it is mainly because Elden Ring is on such a scale that From Software, like, it doesn't compare to anything From Software have done before. So there is a lot of running around, and Pegasus helps with that a lot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get back here and get some height. And while I do that, I'm going to talk about the Royal Knight's Resolve. So Royal Knight's Resolve is a skill you can apply to your weapon. And what it's supposed to do is it's supposed to boost the next attack by 80% until you attack with that weapon, right? Or it's actually supposed to last for like nine seconds if you don't attack and then run out. However, if I use it on my left hand and then on two hand, it's also gonna transfer to my right hand. That being said, because I never attack with the weapon that I uh, used the RKR on, it doesn't run out. So I get 80% damage boost for nine seconds and this is the result. I hit Godric so hard that his cape doesn't register it and stays suspended in the air. <laughs> Another important thing I should probably talk about is why the heck was he not fighting back? Well, that's because I didn't enter the fight from um, the fog wall 
And so his AI doesn't actually get loaded. And that way, I can go ahead and, and yeah, just simply kill him very easily without any kind of resistance. So now I want to get to... Basically, the goal right now is to upgrade my weapon as fast as possible. In order to do that, I need to get pretty far into the game, all the way to the consecrated uh, snowfield. And that means I need to get to Langdale. Now, Langdale is the capital um, of these lands. And in order to get there, I am going to go to this area called Nokron. But this is just a preview area, right? Like, there's nothing here. However, because I can wrong warp in any area, I can simply perform a wrong warp and get to the legitimate part of Nokron. That's not just a preview. And I'm going to spawn directly in front of the Mimic boss fights. This is insanely, insanely good. Because normally, in order to get to Nokron, you need to kill Radan. But I'm pretty weak right now, and it would take a quite a while, but this way I can get to the Shifra River immediately and spawn in front of the best boss fight, the Mimic. So the Mimic, I mean, he's going to look pretty uh, pretty good because he's going to look like me, but <laughs> he's also kind of paper thin because I just unequipped all my armor and I have a pretty strong weapon, so I'm going to cast a flame and he's dead. Look what it says. Great enemy felt. That was truly a difficult boss fight right there. So, the Sword of Night and Flame that I'm using, it has two attacks. You have already seen both of them. The R1 is the main one, which is the beam that I used on Godric. It hits for more damage the closer I am to a target. And the second one is the flame, which you saw here on the Mimic. It has a wider spread, so I can use it on enemies that would be dodging the beam. But yeah, the beam is going to be the main one. Now, from here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a Remembrance boss that is located in this area. It's the Regal Ancestor Spirit. In order to wake him up and just to kill him immediately, uh, sometimes I actually think that we're the bad guy in this game, I'm going to light these six fires. And while I do that, I think it's time to plug some donations because the pizza cutting incentive is sort of coming up soon so all right well we still have twenty four thousand dollars to go twitch chat come on send those donations in and, but we do indeed have so many donations coming in for that we have 25 from stutes that says i need to summon some friends to meet the pizza <laughs> swap incentive hashtag let me donate here you hear that guys let's go pizza let's go twitch chat Come on, Twitch chat, we can do this. All right, we also have $5 from Bistro Math that says $5 pizza cutter trained activate. Shout out to the Calzone with the screaming hot cheese inside. <laughs> we also have a $1,500 donation from A and C that says dog. <laughs> <laughs> We're about nice. to find out if that dog is a good dog or a bad dog. Yeah, watch out for those dogs, Kevin. That dog was pretty <laughs> bad, yeah. Uh, and we also have a special $25 donation from Mama Souls that says, Kata, my heart is so full and I'm beyond proud to see you on this stage. I wish you all the luck in the world, but I know you will absolutely crush this run. Much love, Souls Mom. Thank you so much, Mama. Much appreciated the kind words. All right, so I'll be approaching another boss fight here. Like I said, it's going to be the Regal Ancestor Spirit because I got hit by the rat I'm going to heal up. And this boss fight can be actually quite random. So we'll see what kind of a pattern we get. I'm going to approach it. And I'm going to activate RKR, again, Royal Knight's Resolve, to get the massive damage boost. And then I'm basically hoping for two of three attacks as an opener. And I got the worst one, because of course I did. GDQ moment. Boost one. This could be good, though. Let's see how much hard... Uh, oh, there we go. Okay. Nice. That is a Stop. good dog right there. That was a good boy. Yeah, that, that fight can go south boy. really quickly. Yeah, so fortunately, um, what the Ancestor Spirit can do very often in that situation is just teleport away. And during the teleport animation, you cannot actually kill it. And he's going to teleport to the other side of the arena, and the fight can get really messy. But fortunately, that didn't happen. And uh, both the flame and the beam actually hit the head, which dealt extra damage. That's why you saw um, what you saw, and you saw destruction. From here, I'm going to be heading to the next boss fight. 
But first, I'm going to set up another Pegasus. You remember earlier I told you that like in areas where you're not supposed to be on the horse, if you are on Pegasus, the game's not going to force you off it. This is going to come in super handy in here because the next fucking... Oops. The next boss fight... <laughs> everyone hates this boss. When I dropped an F-bomb three years ago, I said I was European. That hasn't changed in the three years, okay, guys? <laughs> uh, yeah, this boss fight is a real pain in the butt. And thanks to Torrent, I can actually try to use a strategy that might confuse it a lot. So let's hope that that happens. It's a duo boss fight. It's Valiant Gargoyles. This is not a Remembrance boss, but I need to kill it in order to get to the Fias Chumps, which are coming up soon, so get the, do the Donos in for the pizza. I'm going to run into the center here, uh, very meticulously. I'm going to get around these stalactites, and then I'm going to touch the rock on the left. Now, the Gargoyle hopefully will think that that's where I am and start walking towards it and try to target me there. I'm going to get to the other rock here, apply the RKR, and while he's investigating like the Sherlock Holmes thing is, Oops, that's not good. I slid off the rock, I slid a little bit too far forwards. Alright, let's roll the face transition. Hopefully one more bean gets the job done. Good there recovery. Very nice. Second gargoyle's gonna approach me now. Jump towards me, I can strafe that, do another beam. Okay, that kinda missed. I don't wanna fight around this rock, there's not much space to move around. These guys are insanely elusive, too. It's very difficult sometimes to get a full damage beam out of the sword. This should be a yeah, phase transition. I'm going to apply RKR, do a beam, and if there's no dodge, which there is... Oh, okay. Very there, nice. there we go. I told you. I told you. This boss fight is not good, but we made it work. We made it work. All right. So, because great level design also needs some teleporters, and we've already seen one. I'm going to get to the coffin here. And the coffin basically takes me to like another side of the river. We are underground, as I said. And because we didn't go through any loading screen, the fantastic thing is that Torrent still stays in his Pegasus mode, so I can just kind of fly to the next boss, which are the Fias champions. So uh, yeah, what's, what's the pizza swapping incentive at? We are so close. We're just $17,000 away from getting that met. Oh, that's... That's a shame, but I have a proposal. Okay, we can keep the donation incentive going, and I can use it uh, later on for someone else. All right, sounds good. How does that sound to you out there in the audience? Because the glitch is really cool. It's actually the fastest glitch that we have. Um, or I should say, it is the fastest way to complete this category. I'm not showing that route off because it turns every single boss fight into the same thing. And instead, uh, I think this is a better showcase of the category. So yeah, let's keep that incentive open and um, we can go ahead and try to use it on, on somebody else because we can basically do it almost anywhere. I'm going to rest at this grace. This is to replenish my resources. And I'm going to head over to the Fias Champs, which is basically... A three-wave boss fight. Uh, first, I get approached by one NPC, then I get approached by another NPC, and then I get approached by three NPCs at the same time. And it can get really messy, because humanoid enemies in, in any kind of From Software game, they're always really tough to deal with, because they'll be rolling around and stuff. And uh, yeah, I prefer if I'm the only one that can roll. All right, finish that off. Good, that's a good start. I'm going to summon the wolves. Summon a companion. This is to split aggro. And I'm going to wait for Rogier to spawn, which is the second wave. Apply RKR. Try to hit him with the flame again once he gets rid of his invincibility frames. That didn't work this time. See, he rolls through it. I don't have stamina to roll, but I'm alive. So I'm going to heal up. Let's try this again. Stop! He's destroying my wolves. That's not good. And he dodged again. Let's try that one more time. Okay, he actually got hit this time. That's at least something. Now he buffed his weapon, so I don't really want to jump into him. Good job, Wolf. Oh. Not only do you have the highly unfortunate circumstance of them being able to roll, this is really the first part of the run where we see a prominence towards input reading, where it's insanely obvious that they're reading everything that Cat is putting through the controller right now. 
Yeah, that's exactly right. So not having the wolves for the last wave is pretty bad. So I hope that I get some good connections here with the flame. Again, I'm going to wait for them to spawn, attack, and hopefully... Okay, that's a good hit. The NPC on the right died completely. I cannot really do anything while these skulls are activated. I reapply RKR. Alright, there's more skulls from my boy Lionel. And more skulls from my boy Lionel. We're gonna run through them. And more skulls from my boy Lionel. <laughs> The good thing is, he's almost dead. I'm gonna reapply RKR. And more skulls from Abu Leonel. Okay, we, okay, we'll just keep he on running around. He is spamming. And this is what I hate, dude. Like, <laughs> <laughs> this is a major reset point in all remembrances. When you get to this point in the run, uh, it's it really is RNG. We have some strats that we can put in place, but unfortunately, when you get this kind of a setup, uh, you know, Kata's really just kind of fighting for his life here. Nice. That was a fantastic that finish, though. Nice job. Thank you. All right, that was, that was tight. We love Fias Chumps. Yeah, Fias Chumps are pretty good. I Time for a quick donation? Yeah, yeah, go for it. Well, we have $10,000 from the Yeti. Let's go. Let's go. They say, hey all, Yeti here. We've got another $10,000 to push even closer to 3 million. Now I'd love to say, let me solo her here, but we need everyone's help. So I am ringing my summoning bell. Can I summon a $5 donation train to push us to 3 million? Let's go, Twitch chat. Hell yeah. So. You saw me immediately after killing Fias Chumps. I took the grace. This is because I'll be coming back there later. And um, now I take the teleporter to Lane Dell. But instead of actually heading towards Lane Dell, um, I'm going to run back to the outskirts. This is because, as you can see, I cannot activate in the bottom left. I cannot activate the horse yet. But now in the outskirts, I can. Normally from Altus Plateau, you would enter from the fog wall right there. But yeah, thanks to the teleporter, we bypassed it. I'm gonna rest here and I'm gonna spend all my resources again because we will be re we will be wrong warping soon. I'll spend all of it on intelligence, get to 31. This is because the Sword of Night and Flame uh, beam scales off of R1, uh, sorry, off of intelligence. So we'll get more damage that way. And then I'm gonna set up Pegasus here again off of this railing. And as I said, the main goal right now is to get to the Consecrated Snowfield. So that's what we're gonna do. Now, in order to get there, oh, I got Pegasus in one, nice. So I stored him in, in one quit out, and he also fell off to his death in one quit out, which is quite nice. So what I'm supposed to do here is normally you're supposed to kill Morgoth, which is the Remembrance boss of this area. And then um, you kind of get locked into his area or arena, and you're supposed to kind of find the impenetrable uh, thorns leading to the earth tree. And then Melina, the chick that gave us torrents, Basically tells you that, oh, you need to get to the mountaintops of giants, get to the forge, perform an event there. Here's a medallion that's going to operate a, you know, big-ass elevator. Well, I want to skip that dialogue. It takes about 16 seconds, so I'm not going to kill Morgoth yet, and I'm going to head directly towards the elevator. However, I do not have the medallion, right? So I need to find a different way to actually get to the mountaintops of the giants. But don't worry, Miyazaki's got my back. <laughs> Very convenient uh, default position placement there. As I'm heading over this uh, bottomless pit, I think it's time for a couple more donations. All right, sounds good. Well, we have a $25 donation from Demon Fire that says, just putting this $25 in the swear jar for Catalyst since he's busy right now. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. I appreciate that. We also have $25 from Infinity x 2 k 4 that says, Good luck tonight, Kata. Reset City is cheering you on. Make sure you breathe while you give your commentary. Kata Jam. Thank you so much, Infinity. Appreciate that. We also have $25 from Captain Ezekiel that says, Best of luck to one of the goats of Elden Ring. Kata is going to kill this run, and I'm super happy to have met him during this event. Also, surely Redon would, will behave, right? Surely. Right? <laughs> You say go, go to Felden Ring. I didn't know that Spicy was running tonight as well. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we just passed another Gargoyle, but I've had enough of them. I don't want to drop any more F-bombs, so I'm just going to get past it. <laughs> and I'm going to go ahead and quit out on this elevator, which is going to, you know, um, de-aggro the Gargoyle. Now, you saw there, maybe briefly, that I'm now on the elevator. Uh, the game recognizes that. And I'm going to go ahead and perform a wrong warp. 
Yeah, this one is pretty important to not mess up because I would have to run all the way back here. Um, you basically, there, there's some specific timing of the warp because if I do the warp too early, it's just gonna take me to where I choose to, you know, to warp to. Like the map warp is gonna take priority over the memory of grace warp. And if I do it too late, I'm not gonna warp uh, through the map, so I'll just return to my last grace. And yeah, with this wrong warp, we are now at the mountaintops of, of giants, which is quite nice. However, the problem is that the consecrated snowfield is an optional area, and you're supposed to get another medallion to activate it. And there's actually two pieces that you would have to collect. However, what I can do here is I can take this grace to come back later, jump down here. As you can see, death camera gets activated. But a death cam and a kill plane are two separate things, and usually they do not overlap. And the kill plane here is misplaced, so I can drop down on the lower platform there. The game recognizes me being in the consecrated snowfield, and when I go ahead and wrong warp, it's actually going to take me to the consecrated snowfield default position, which is going to be right after the elevator. And that way, I'm going to enter this massive snowy field, which I'm not a big fan of. I've also been told that uh, this is what Canada looks like, but <laughs> I've never, never been there, so I can't confirm. Right as I enter the snowfield, I'm going to head to the right, and this is the area where we're going to be picking up the remaining somber smithing stones, the level 8 and level 9. I use these walls to kind of navigate, because as you can see, I really cannot see, for the lack of a better term. All right, let's head over here. There will be a beetle here, like the previous smithing stones we just picked up from the floor. But there can be also these beetles that, you know, either have them or like flask refills or something like that. No! Oh, <laughs> he was out for blood. They hit like trucks too. They do not mess around. This is considered an end game area, and uh, we are far from end game level at this point. So Cat yep. has got to be very careful. That's right. And these electric guys are also pretty scary. Okay, easy. Nice. <laughs> yeah, you get two shot there, so it's it's good that we actually avoided that. Good stuff. What was that? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's very excited for that pizza incentive. As they should be. <laughs> yeah, and we're just, we're only $5,000 away from meeting that Twitch chat. Let's go! Woo! So. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Pizza. So there in the snowfield, I took another grace because I'll be coming back there later. And I performed another wrong warp to get closer to the Mogrim Palace. Then this is like one of the few strats that I found. Because I'm good at failing, obviously I died here. And then I figured out, oh, it actually saves time, right? So that's pretty cool. So this is because in this game, there are also, besides graces that you can respawn at when you die, there are also stakes of Marika. And essentially they serve just as a checkpoint that you can decide to uh, spawn at. And this one is closer to the destination that I need to go to. And on top of that, it prevents an invasion from an NPC. When you get invaded by an NPC, you cannot mount the horse. So this way, I can actually like um, get here faster because the invasion doesn't happen. However, speaking of invasions, here's the Sanguine Noble. Sanguine Noble needs to die in order for this teleporter to Mogwin Palace to, um, to activate. And killing Sanguine Noble, like you saw how terrible killing NPC enemies is at Fias Champions. Sanguine Noble is kind of similar in that regard, so I've got a different strat. I'm going to jump down on this ledge here. I'm going to turn around. I'm going to block. And here's my boy coming in. <laughs> nice. And he's gone. He almost had you two. It's quite close. I actually have to block there because, like, if I don't... I might get hit midair and, and just die in one hit, so that would be not good. So now we entered Mogwin Palace. Mogwin Palace, you could think of it as a small legacy dungeon. And the good thing is that at the start of it, you can actually get on horse. So obviously I'm going to go ahead and abuse that because there's a kill plane uh, right beneath here. The, okay, this Thorin setup is actually kind of precise, so I want to pay a little bit more attention here. That should be good. Because sometimes, like, if you mess up these setups, uh, what can end up happening is that you spawn on the edge, and basically it's Torrent performing Pegasus glitch with you because you fall down, he stands on top, and you die. So that's not cool. From here, I'm going to head over to Mog. 
And instead of going like through this big palace and you know getting elevation normally by using an elevator, I can abuse the geometry of this level. There's also a plus 10 smithing stone there, but taking it is pretty slow. So instead, I'm going to get a specific armor set later on to kind of offset for that damage loss. That being said, having plus 10 and that armor set would be an overkill. I would basically save no time to it. So that's the strat we're going to be going for. I want to talk about this pizza incentive one more time, because even though we are just a few thousand dollars away, you guys are about to get a big slice of cheese here real quick with Moog. Get <laughs> this track. <laughs> How long have you been preparing this one, dude? <laughs> Not long. It was off the cuff. <laughs> oh, nice. So Moog is kind of like the annoying uncle that visits you at Thanksgiving uh, that you kind of wish you could just mute. So that's exactly what we're going to do. He's kind of angry and gets in our face. So what I'm going to do is head away and just quit out. What ends up happening, you've seen this before. You've seen this before twice already. I'm going to spawn next to the fog gate and enter the fight not through the fog gate, fog gate, but right next to it. And that allows me to bypass the AI trigger and just walk up to his face and do what I've wanted to do for a long time and just blast him with a beam. Now, because this is a pretty late game boss, it's actually going to take quite a while to kill. Hello, Mog. <laughs> you can see his scarf is also not handling this too well. <laughs> Reapply RKR, he gets staggered. Now the good thing is that he rewards you with a lot of runes, so we're going to be getting a lot of levels from this guy. <laughs> yeah, I practiced pretty hard for that fight, guys. And now that I... I actually warped to the wrong place, I just realized that's completely fine. I'm going to head over to Ichi, to the blacksmith. We took this grace earlier when getting the Sword of Night and Flame. I do that to upgrade my Sword of Night and Flame to plus nine, get more power, and we're going to do the early game cleanup. Or I shouldn't say early game, but like earlier game cleanup. Uh, all right, while I'm here, I'm actually going to purchase these smithing stones. And I'm going to upgrade the Serpent Hunter to plus four. That will be useful for pizza if it gets met. I probably also just lost a couple of levels by spending those runes there, but it'll be fine. I'm sure it'll be fine. So now I'm going to head over to Redala. Like I said, that's the main boss of the Raya Lucaria Academy. We're going to set up the third Pegasus of the run here because it's much faster to uh, run around the Academy than having to run through it, and I'll get to keep Torrent. Redala is quite a tricky boss, actually. Um, she has a sort of a scripted kill, if I perform it correctly. However, there's a small chance that she might start summoning, and then she kind of gets staggered during that animation. That's no bueno, so we hope that doesn't actually happen. Time for a donation? Yeah, yeah, go for it. Well, we are just under $1,000 away from meeting the pizza incentive, and so... Let's go, we can do it for Renala. Here we have $5 from Anonymous that reads, just one more $5 hype train, everyone. Just $5. We are here together. We are here together for pizza. We are here for GDQ. And we are here for MSF. Let's crush that final incentive together. All right, so this time I took the left side of the water wheel. I made sure to actually uh, load the area as soon as possible so that the water wheel is as high as possible when I get on it. I'm going to go ahead and equip the Astrologer Staff um, because I'll be using it in the fight, the first phase. And the pizza swap incentive has been met. Oh. Let's go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That is pretty awesome. <laughs> oh, I love you, audience. All right, let's use it for Redala. But actually, I'm probably going to have to head back to the last grace in order to redo some item uh, ordering. Because I'm not quite sure. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do pizza. Let's do pizza. I'll return to the last grace. And let's, let's do go. Pizza. Let's do pizza. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not going to need the Astrologer staff because, uh, yeah, pizza cutting is, is pretty good. So I need to go back to this grace. This is to reorder items. I need to make sure that the Sword of Night and Flame and the Serpent Hunter are next to each other. So I'm going to put them in a bottomless box. Well, first I need to unequip the Sonaf. So let's do that. Then I'm going to get to the bottomless box, which is kind of like your storage space. 
I'm going to put these two items in there and then put them back in. And then I can order my items by order of acquisition. And that way, now they're going to be next to each other. And that is really important because what pizza swapping essentially does is I'm going to activate a stance on a weapon that has it, which is the Sword of Night and Flame, right? You can hold L2 um, continuously, be in a stance, and then you can like use the R1 and R2 spells. And then I'm going to phase away from an, from an, an enemy. I'm going to lock on, which is going to give me like a little 180 turnaround animation. During that turnaround animation, I'm going to do a very precise sequence of inputs. It's actually pretty difficult to do, so hopefully I get it. And what ends up happening is that stance will carry over to the Serpent Hunter, which we used for Rikard earlier. That means we'll be using a stance on a weapon that doesn't have it. And that kind of breaks the game, and you're going to see what happens. It might actually be like even a better... Uh, Got a better showcase than Fias Champions, but I really wanted to do it for Fias because you saw how terrible that fight can be with Sword of Night and Flame. So you guys really let me drown in that one. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you pulled through. That was the important thing. That's very true. All right, let's take this water wheel again. And uh, let me reorder the items by order of acquisition. Now you can see Serpent Hunter and Sword of Night and Flame are next to each other. I'm also going to unequip the Scimitar. And the first phase of the Renala fight essentially consists of her being suspended in the air and us being unable to hit her, hit her until we, um, you know, perform an Anakin Skywalker move uh, from the third episode where, you know, uh, some bad things happen. <laughs> and then she ends up going to the ground. We can kill her and get to phase two. And I'm going to try to do pizza swap for both those phases. So this skip is actually kind of difficult. I just pulled it off twice in a row. Um, you need, like, very specific height there. You need to delay the second jump on Torrents quite a bit. Um, in order to get enough height and be able to clip up on the stairs. Here's the Carrion Knight. Uh, he can be a pain in the butt. Let's try to keep him off my lawn. There we go. Not today. Not today. <laughs> well, he, could, the elevator he, too. he couldn't handle it and just dropped in the elevator. Yeah, free shield, you know. All right, let's do pizza, okay? Let's go. So I'm going to enter the fight. I'm going to look away from one of the children on the ground, and I'm going to try to do the, the swap. Oh, no. The, the shield. I dropped the shield. <laughs> it's in oh, the way. No. We need to redo it. Because, like, that's the last item that I obtained, so it got in the way. Not like this. Mm. Carrion Knight <laughs> always finds a way to get you. Always finds a way. All right. I'm going to go ahead and drop it. Uh, where is this shield? Heck you, shield. Well, yeah, now I have it equipped. That's fantastic. So I need to unequip it first. Now I can go ahead and drop it. Where are you, shield? There you go. Get the hell out of here. And then now we can try to... <laughs> oh, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> <laughs> pull me once. Shame on you. Pull me twice. Miyazaki's starting to pull the strings. <laughs> All right. Let's see if I can actually do it, because now the setup's going to be a little bit different. Now there are books coming my way, which are going to interrupt it. There's a globe that wants to kill me, yeah. There's fire that wants to kill me. More books. And now it's locking onto the other enemies. No. No. I'm gonna find a way. Let's try it here. No, it interrupted. <laughs> you see I have the Serpent Hunter equipped. It actually worked, but I got interrupted immediately. Oh, Whoa, the chandelier. <laughs> the chandelier. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the shield ruined everything. <laughs> well, this was, like this raised hundred thousand dollars. Okay, so I'm gonna do it. There's no way. <laughs> <laughs> Miyazaki, please. Twitch chat paid for this. Please let us showcase this glitch. It's this is, amazing. This is probably the toughest fight to pull this off on, too. Yeah, there's yeah. just <laughs> so many of those children just crawling around, throwing books and flame and levitating the objects around the room. It is chaos. And yeah, any damage there is going gonna, is gonna to cause you to have to start over. Yep. Now the important thing is that I need to actually pick up my runes because if I lose these runes, we have a big problem. Like this is the one thing that I'm afraid of is losing runes because then I'm not going to be able to get the proper levels. And that would be tough because I could be missing out on damage. I could be, I mean, missing out on health, I could kind of like deal with that a little bit. But there are some strats where, you know, sometimes I'm going to like trade with enemies 
And having extra health for that is, is, is really good. So, yeah, we'll see. Anyway, as I make my way back, uh, I'm going to try to get the runes. I'm going to try to do it in phase one again. And if I cannot get it in phase one, I'm just going to do it in phase two. You're going to get a good showcase of it anyway. And in phase two, it's much easier because it's only Renala there. As I'm making my way back to the fights, I think it is time to read some donations. Great, sounds good. Well, we are just about $160,000 away from unlocking that any percent run Let's at go. the end of this one. You don't want to miss out on that. So starting us off, we have $50 from Klizix that says, some of these most incredible GDQ moments occur during these donation sprints near the end of the event. Donation trains for charity are truly wholesome and emotional moments. Let's do it, Twitch chat. Here together, let's get that three million. Let's go. All right, we can get more. All right, well, we have a $5 donation from a cheese man continuing that $5 donation train saying, choo-choo. And then we also have $10 from Hammy Dotpy that says, I see your $5 train and I raise you to a $10 train. Thank you so much. Can get more. All right. Well, we have $50 from Distilla that says, it is incredibly satisfying to watch Catalyst annihilating these bo bosses. Thanks so much for an entertaining run with masterful narration. Huge thanks to everyone at SGDQ. Always so happy to see an amazing community pull together. I uh, got my runes. That's good. Let's try it. Chandelier's coming up. Chandelier is coming up again. Oh, no, you're not wrong, dude. <laughs> All right, let's get the hell out Close of here. Fun. Yeah, when you see those flames on the ground, that's how you know that they're starting to lower the chandelier. And you have a few seconds to get out of the way, but that pizza swap just takes a, just enough time that if it starts while you're in the middle of it, you, you kind of ha have to make a decision to either you know risk it or not. So. Yep. All right, I'm going to try to do it from a little bit more distance. Let's see if it works. Maybe I can actually... Never mind. Let, let's hide Okay, that would have worked, but I messed up. There we go. Nice. There nice. Let's no. go. No. no. The book. Well, you saw for a brief moment what just happened there. Like, I destroyed almost everybody in one second. There we go. Nice. Yeah, the there order we go. <laughs> Pizza swapping destruction. No, 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 no. Oh. <laughs> Knowledge is outplaying me. I'm not going to let that pass. <laughs> That's what you get, knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the last one? All the way there. Oh, she might try to get you with the books. I'm going to go behind the wall. Pizza. Ooh, oh, OK, good. I think we Oh, yeah, I think it? you got her. No, uh, not quite. Almost there. There we go. <laughs> now Renala's going to go down, finally. And we're gonna pizza swap her to death in phase one. There we and go, down. that's it. So the pizza cutter actually has a really strange cone. Hold on one second. Sure. She opens with a pretty familiar attack, but we have pizza, so it's much better. Indeed. <laughs> So that pizza cutter has a very like upward angling cone shape. So you do have to kind of look in a certain direction downwards in order to line it up to anything directly in front of you. Uh, but you know, we know Kat has got the, the strats and everything to make sure that uh, knowledge is defeated with pizza. That's what I like to hear. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. So I'm actually missing out on just one level from the upgrades that I spent on the Serpent Hunter. So that's no big deal at all. I'm going to explain how pizza works. Just uh, right now, there's going to be another skip here. I'm going to jump down and avoid all the kill boxes here and jump into Radan's arena. And as you can see in the icon top left, there's the stake of Marika. So I dropped into a range of one of these stakes and I'm going to spawn basically right next to the arena that completely skips his legacy dungeon and having to go through the festival. However, activating the festival is also important because it's going to allow me to uh, yeah, do something not very nice to someone that you guys might like. But uh, we'll get to that in <laughs> just a second. Redan can be quite random. I'm going to try to approach him on the horse. The first thing I do is I try to hide behind this item so that the initial orb hits the item and I don't actually have to dodge. Oh, there we go. Then I'm going to abuse the iframes that I get from mounting torrents. Like that. 
And I'm getting that RNG, because of course, there's another orb. There's a shotgun overhead now, maybe, yeah. Another shotgun, okay, let's try to approach him now. Never mind, he went into melee, this could be kind of messy. I'm getting wrecked by the overhead as well. Let me heal up. Buffing. That was close, nice, but he's Nice good. recovery uh, on that. Yeah. Good stuff. So that was a really messy fight. Uh, like, 9 out of 10 times, he's going to have a set pattern at the beginning that allows me to basically get rid of him quite easily. And now everybody here in attendance that has the attendee badge and likes it, or everyone that's a Podboy fan, please look away. I... Chat, close your eyes. Uh, I, I regret this, but it needs to be done. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh. Crowd favorite. I know, I know, <laughs> but... Hey, it's Miyazaki that gave him a really good item, okay? It's not my fault. <laughs> <laughs> so he drops a talisman, which is the Warrior Jar Shard. Essentially, the Warrior Jar Shard gives you 10% bonus to... Uh, weapon arts to weapon skills, which also applies to the Sword of Nine and Flame. So it is a huge damage boost. Um, from here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually approach the Forge now, because basically, like, there are only a couple of things left uh, that I could do before approaching some of the late game stuff. And killing more gold would be one of them. But as I said, I want to get to the Forge to skip the Melina dialogue. So this is what I'm going to do now. We're going to head over to the Fire Giants, but I'm also going to set up Pegasus here first. Now, this is because the mountaintops of the Giants is a pretty big area, but what it does is it basically forces you to go from point A to point B, and then from point B back to point A, um, but with different elevation. However, because we can fly, there are items, or I should say objects here, that I can use to gain enough height. The problem is that because the area uh, above me is approachable, it's, it's where you're supposed to be later on, there are death planes all over the place, because you can fall from there, so the player needs to be killed. So the skip that I'm going to be doing here is actually extremely precise, and I'm literally on the verge of death almost all the time. So hopefully I can pull it off. Okay, one inch higher, I would have been dead, so that's good. Now this jump on the next branch is really important, because I'm jumping over a death plane, and if I don't get this jump, I'm going to just die instantly. So I'm going to line myself up, one more step. Okay, good Good first part, good first part. Second part, get on this branch. Okay, and then get some height here, good. And now to actually avoid the death plane, I need to take some specific pathing. Get height here, and that's the skip done. So that's good. This skip is so much harder than it looks. Kata just made that look like the easiest thing ever, but it takes a lot of work to get that skip down. Great job, Kata. Thank you. Speaking of the mortars, um, some of the community members have created tools that allow us to like see these death planes. So yeah, that would be one that you would really want to check out because like check out the skip when uh, the kill boxes are displayed because we are literally just dancing on the verge of death there. Uh, but fortunately, it all worked out, so that's good. I'm going to be approaching Fire Giant. I'll go to the left side here and take a grace just in case something goes wrong. Um, Fire Giant, I, again, have a set strategy for it, kind of like for a down, but there's a small chance it might just not give me the pattern that I'm looking for. So in case that happens, I want to have this grace. Before I get to Fire Giant, we have time for some quick donations. All right, well, we are just about $147,000 away from hitting $3 million. We're getting so close, Twitch chat. Let's go. And to help kickstart our way up there, we have a $10,000 donation from Fangamer. Oh. Fangamer says, Hey everybody, Fangamer here. This week has felt like a speed run. It's gone by so quickly that we can't believe it's almost over. We're honored to be have been part of SGDQ 2022. Thank you to the runners, commentators, GDQ staff, volunteers, MSF, sponsors, and everyone who has sent in a donation or per purchased an item with a charity incentive. We'd like to give a special shout out to the in-person audience for bringing back the energy we've all been missing. Can we get some audience hype? 
What? Keep that energy going, and the donations coming as the total races towards that three million and beyond. All right, so that was phase one of Fire Giant. You saw me abuse the iframes uh, from Torrent again. And then he basically has like a weak spot on his leg. But the problem is that as you... Okay, that's not good. Interesting. Alright, there we go. Uh, very nice. Good recovery. So essentially he has a weak spot on his leg and the important thing that I needed to do there is to ensure that he would stagger in such a way that he would like stagger into the beam. So I kept on continuously dealing damage. That's why I baited that specific attack in first phase. And then for some reason he didn't stagger in second phase. That means that I probably attacked slightly too late. So his poise actually dropped. Poise being kind of like hidden damage that you're dealing to an enemy and once uh, you reach a certain threshold they're they're gonna you know their stance is gonna break and they're gonna be staggered so here's the forge i can just fly over it because through all this time i still have pegasus activated because we didn't go through a single single loading screen which is really nice and yeah the second phase can get really messy because fire giant can start doing all kinds of like fiery stuff and, and it hits really hard as was pointed out earlier we do not have uh, too much health yet, so pretty much anything is gonna one-shot us. Also, if you're wondering, um, the armor, I forgot to mention that, that I'm wearing is Bernal's armor. It's the, uh, it's from the NPC that I picked up the Devour Scepter from earlier for that, for that one glitch. And because I cannot actually do that glitch yet, I'm still missing one item, or I cannot do that skip yet because I'm missing one item. I'm not gonna be progressing too much further to here through Fire Mozula. Um, we go to the forge, Melina basically offers herself as a sacrifice to burn the thorns on the earth tree. And there's a boss fight here that I can skip, but like I said, I cannot do it yet. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to progress to the first grace here. Well, not first grace, but to the furthest grace that I can get to. And just like before in Gaelid and in the uh, Volcano Manor, I'm in a trap state, so I need to go ahead and, and rest at a grace. So I'll be running through here. And there's going to be a quit out I'll do here to reset an enemy. He's kind of a pain in the butt. So hopefully I don't get to uh, deal with him too much. Then one little thing that I'll be doing, um, or rather two little things in terms of movement that I would like to explain. The first one is when I'm going to be jumping off a platform, I'm going to do a jump attack. This is because not only can the recovery animation from the jump attack be a little bit faster in certain scenarios than a regular job. Well, like right there it was instant. Um, and also, if I'm in combat, dropping down even like a couple meters is going to drain so much of my stamina. However, if I attack midair, what ends up happening is only the stamina for the jump attack gets drained, which is very little in comparison. And upon landing, uh, because I don't get the regular stagger, I also keep the stamina. Another little thing that you see me do here when I'm in combat and I want to replenish stamina, you see me crouch, right? This is another addition kind of taken over from Sekiro where you can crouch in this game by pressing L3. And it is faster than just letting go of sprint for a bit and recovering stamina that way. This way I can keep up higher speed and recover stamina at the same time. All right, let's get through this church. It can sometimes be a little bit dangerous, not this time, so that's good. I'm going to jump over this railing. And here you're going to get to see me jump. I'm going to do a jump attack. Drains a little bit of stamina, but no stamina drain on the landing. That's what I was talking about. Then as I approach the next grace, I'm going to make sure to sit on the further side of it because this dragon up here can kind of stay aggroed and like, yeah, basically keep me in combat so I couldn't warp away, which wouldn't be good. Then another thing that happens with the forge being activated is that a quest line in the round table holds of Rogier, an NPC, gets progressed and he basically ends up dying. And that's good because he drops a set, the armor set that I was talking about, each piece of that armor set boosts my sorceries by 2%. So four pieces, that's overall 8%. I got hit by enough books uh, on the Renala fight that I do have the knowledge to do that quick math there. <laughs> so I'm going to talk to Rogier, and then I'm going to have to perform several quitouts to progress the quest line, because this is peak level gameplay. As that's happening, I think we can go ahead and read a couple of donations. All right, sounds great. Well, we have $5 from Yvonne that says, First time donating for MSF at SGDQ, but I couldn't resist the $5 hype train. Three million, let's go. 
Let's get the three million, guys. Right. We also have fifty dollars from Gideon Offnir that says a tarnished can <laughs> never be an Elden Lord unless you donate five dollars. <laughs> <laughs> and Hypersomniac, you're currently on the couch, so how are you feeling? Wouldn't you like to be able to showcase off that any percent run for everybody at home? Absolutely, it is a it is a fun run. There are some. Uh, tricks in there that uh, you will not get to see in uh, all remembrances. So definitely look forward to that if we hit the three million. Yeah, for sure. Hyper has been practicing hard, preparing hard. So it would be a shame if you didn't get to show off his hard work. You cannot do that to him. He's such a nice looking guy. So. Aww. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> let's go blood. Twitch chat. <laughs> let's get it. Yeah, get those donations in. It'll be worth it. All right, so now that I have activated the forge, I can finally come back to Morgoth and go ahead and get rid of him. Now, if you're a Morgoth fan, you're probably going to be even more disappointed than all the Mog fans when I fought him with no AI, because essentially, you're not even going to get to see the boss, which is uh, yeah, quite rough for all the Morgoth fans. So what I'm going to do, again, I set up Pegasus in a familiar place, but what ends up happening, um, instead of going to the left, to the elevator there, I go to the right. I'm going to drop on a ledge here to lose some height and also to load uh, Landell properly because right now only the outskirts are loaded. Uh, blop, there we go. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to find a place where there's no kill boxes beneath and I'm going to go ahead and store my position next to it. Now, you know that I cannot, um, I cannot lose Torrent if I have Pegasus, but actually I do want it to happen this time. So I'm going to go ahead and, and, and do a quit out. And because I quit out, I'm going to lose Torrent. Or I, I'm going to lose Pegasus. And because I'll be standing inside of a Legacy Dungeon, the game's going to force me off of him. Unless what I do here is I do a precise setup where I store my last position on flat ground right next to this wall. I quit out. I'm going to perform a jump forwards. I'm going to touch the pillar and then immediately pivot to the left. What ends up happening is laying there loads, but I'm not going to land on any flat ground like this. So now I'm falling, right? Landale is loaded and I'm falling. And I'm falling through rocks, and I'm falling through the seven seas, as you're going to see in a bit. And I'm going to keep on falling. Now, normally, as in most games, there's a 12-second timer that's supposed to kill you. If you fall for 12 seconds, the player dies. Oh, here are the seas. Very nice. And beneath them is the void, um, which, yeah, there you go. Um, normally, there's a 12-second timer that's supposed to kill you. But if you attack, that timer gets reset. If you're falling normally without torrents, you can only attack in the air once, so you can reset your timer once for up to 24 seconds. That's not a lot. However, if I'm sitting on Torrent, you can see that I can keep on falling and keep on repeatedly attacking, repeatedly resetting the timer, all the way until I fall so far down that the area of Lindell deloads. And you know who doesn't have Torrent? Morgoth. So he cannot attack the same way that I do. He cannot reset his fall timer. And what you're going to end up seeing, or well, may mainly hearing, is Morgoth's demise by me falling under the map. So here's the beetle um, that's located in the area. And listen. And that's Morgoth. There it is. Great fight. <laughs> <laughs> now, I would have loved to actually show you um, him dying, but because the game still locks you out of warping, I need to make sure that I warp exactly as he dies. Otherwise, I'll be basically kind of soft locked there. There's like a way to get out of it, but I would have lost my runes, which is not good. Now I'm going to approach 40 sacks. If you remember, at the very beginning of the fight, um, Huggers, by the way, I'm going to... At the very beginning of the fight, we got the curse mark of death, right? That took quite a while. This hugging also takes quite a while, so we spent a lot of time trying to get to the Lich Dragon 40 sacks. And you're going to see that the fight, well, you're going to see what the fight is. But before we get there, I need to do some more hugging in order to get to this fight. And while I'm hugging Fia, some more donations can be read. All right, sounds good. Well, we have a $50 donation from Jeff N that says, I'm donating in Alexander's memory. <laughs> Rip. We also have $5 from Reset uh, Ramaroni that says, Every $5 donation pours one out for our boy Alexander, the pot man. We also have $12 from Ashwin that says, Takata, the showstopper, thank you for being one of the lifeblood of the Speasels that keeps the community alive, fun, and constantly challenging us to be better. And for being genuinely a really good and awesome dude, we love you. 
Thank you so much, Lynn. Appreciate it. All right, so I just talked to Fia a lot. I quit out to progress the quest line, talked to her some more, and now I can enter the fights. Now, we are kind of powerful because I have just equipped the Rogier set. I have also equipped uh, the other talisman, so I have some extra intelligent levels. And if I do this correctly, which I hope I will, a boss fight that I just spent like five minutes setting up overall is going to go by kind of quick. I'm going to apply RKR from a specific place. I'm going to aim for his leg, hitting his head, and he's gone. <laughs> so that is actually kind of precise because I want the entirety of the beam, which is a continuous attack, to hit his head, which, you know, deals extra damage. And we managed to pull it off, so that's very, very good. So now I'm going to head over to Astel. And that means I need to go back to the Temple Quarter, which is a grace that we picked up all the way at the beginning of the run, like six minutes in or so. And I'm going to spend my runes here, because I will be wrong warping again. So I need to make sure to get 52 intelligence. This is for a breakpoint on a boss later on. And yeah, overall I'm missing... Uh, well, actually, I can go ahead and pop this Remembrance, which gives me 30k, which I just got from 40 sacks, and I can get the same levels that I would get. Perfect. So I have 34 Vigor, as you can see, I have a bit more comfortable health power right now, but don't worry, we're gonna be getting to like late game areas where the bosses hit like a truck anyway, so it's gonna help, but <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's not as comforting as it actually looks like. From here, I'm going to head over down south. And this is actually because getting to Astel, normally, what you need to do is you need to go underground. You need to go underground, and there's a lot of running involved. However, after killing Astel, there's an area, Moonlight Alta, that's up there. And there's a big elevator that leads there. However, I can actually abuse that. I can abuse the elevator shaft, and you're going to see how. First, I'm going to get this grace here. This will become useful later if uh, one of the endings gets chosen. That's another bit war that we actually have going for this run. It's three different endings, Rani's, Fias, and the Frenzied Flame ending. So you can get your donations in for that. And I'm going to head over to the cliff here. And by the cliff, I'm going to go ahead and set up another Pegasus. And then I'm going to head over out of bounds inside of the mountain, close to the Lake of Rots, where Astel is actually located. While I'm doing that, while I'm setting up Pegasus, while I'm going to be running there, we have time for more donations. All right, excellent. A little bit of an update on that bid war. It's pretty fascinating. Ronnie's ending is in the lead with $14,081. But Frenzied Flame ending is actually only $700 behind that. So if you would like to see a swap on the lead for that donation incentive, we're only $700 away for that. But for some donations, we can kick it off with an anonymous $200 donation that says, bonus any percent Elden Ring run equals more GDQ. Let's go. Let's go. Let's keep this thing going. And we're so close. We're only $141,000 away from being able to unlock that any percent. Let's go, Twitch chat. I mean, worst case scenario, I'm just going to die a couple more times and we'll get plenty of time to <laughs> get the donations in. <laughs> All right, so I had to redo Pegasus here because the first time Torrent actually didn't drop into a kill plane, but um, that's not a big deal. So now I run inside of the mountain, as I said. I'm going to re-equip the, the Rogier set. The reason I got rid of it is because over the big hat and over the cloak, or cape, I should say. I cannot really see where I'm setting up Pegasus, so that's why I unequipped it. And I'm going to run in a very specific place, and I'm going to touch a rock there, which is going to load the area underneath us. Like, you can see that there's like some stuff to the left. That's still the Urnia. And there's stuff underneath us which isn't loaded yet, but it will be loaded very shortly. Then I'm going to get on the elevator shaft. The game's going to think that I'm inside of the Lake of Rot, and I'm going to go ahead and perform a wrong warp. This one's pretty important to hit again because I would have to run all the way back. So there you see the elevator shaft loading in. I'm going to run to the middle. Now the game thinks I'm in Lake of Rots. All right, hopefully that's fine. We go back again to the Stormhill Shack. 
And I messed it up. Well, I told you we would have more time for donations. <laughs> <laughs> All right, excellent. And I see a pretty interesting thing brewing in Twitch chat. Looks like we're having a little bit of a challenge for you folks at home. Starting at the 1.30 minute mark, we are going to start a $5 hype train. Doesn't that sound like a great idea, audience? Sounds good to me. All right, let's do it. So we have $25 from Kiwi that says, had to donate during your run, Kata. Reset City Hype. Thank you so much. We also have $5 from Mr. Epnor that says, one last push, one last effort, one last $5 train. Let's go, dude. Let's go, dude, indeed. All right, we also have $300 from Argo that says, let's give Ronnie what she wants. Some pizza. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> I don't know if that would work out. <laughs> Time for some more? Of course, let's go. All right, well, we have a lot of donations coming in. We also have $250 from Blorgog that says, give me pizza. Well, you got it. We also have $25 from msushi219 that says, another SGDQ is winding down, but it's not over yet. Let's hit that 3 million mark so Sumichi can become the true Elden Lord. <laughs> All right, let's go for two more. All right, sounds good. We have $15 from Roads Go Ever On that says, I hear a $5 hype train, but not all of us have the ability to join in on the fun. Here's a little extra for those who want to join but can. Just another way for all of us to be here together, heart. My last. All right, we have $100 from Doe Wolf that says, you get a hug and you get a hug and Dragon gets a laser beam. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so again, I'm gonna touch this rock, load the elevator shaft, and hopefully I hit the wrong orb this time. Okay, I got it this time, can't tell. In before I spawn at the Stormhill Shack again. Nah, we're good, okay, nice. nice. So now, the default position is actually at the bottom of the elevator. And not just that, it's on the correct side. So I'm going to spawn like right in front of Astel. Now, Astel, he's a pain in the butt as well. Um, the RNG on this boss is quite brutal. If everything goes well, I can get rid of him very quickly and very easily. If it doesn't, he's going to start teleporting around and throwing meteors at me and whatnot. So let's see what happens. He's going to hopefully open with a beam that I'm going to roll. Or... Not, okay, that's pretty rare. So he's gonna open with a beam, super delayed. Interesting. Uh, what, what's happening? Uh, that's actually a good attack because I can get up close and personal and beam him in the face. And it's gonna hit me. Never mind. Nice. Oh, nice. Okay. <laughs> really clean. Doesn't get much better than that. He was a sleepy boy, but that worked out very <laughs> that well. Was really good, yeah. So that looked like super free. It's like, Kara, what the heck are you talking about? Difficult random boss. Well, it was very close to me getting hit there and my R1 actually being interrupted. And then we probably would have seen him teleport away and all the chaos that I talked about would have started. So now that I've killed uh, Astel, I've basically killed all the bosses uh, from outside of the late game areas. So we're going to go ahead and head towards the late game areas indeed. First is going to be the Halleck Tree, which not only has some difficult skips, but also, like I said, some difficult boss fights. The first skip that I'll be doing is the Ordina Town skip. The liturgical town of Ordina has an Everjail kind of um, an event that you're supposed to enter, like kind of a dream. And you're supposed to light these fires, but that's slow. So we're all gonna do that. And instead I'm gonna run over to the side and I'm gonna abuse some of the geometry, which was actually removed in later patches. Funnily enough, from software thought this was absolutely game breaking. Or maybe they just want everyone to do their amazing Everjail. I'm gonna scale up this rock and run up. One, two, one, two. Perfect. Nice. Oh, almost actually fell off there. That was kinda, <laughs> that was kinda close. That was close. All right. The Everjail is super annoying because there's like invisible enemies grabbing you all the time out of nowhere, kind of like Randy Orton. And there's also um, <laughs> archers. Thank you for appreciating that one. Uh, there's also like archers that hit really hard and, and shoot really fast, so it's nice that we are able to skip it. There's a skip for current patch as well, but it's like way more difficult, so I didn't go for it here. I'm gonna jump to the branch here, try to navigate around these bubbles, which also hit like a truck. And it seems like we're good through the first part. We're gonna make it down the Halleck tree. There are ants here, but 
Going from this direction ensures that they're on a cycle where they're not going to approach me. As you can see, they're piecing out. There's another sniper right up there. You can see the giant Oracle Envoy is going to be shooting some bubbles at me. The best way to actually dodge them is just to quit out. So that's what I'm going to do. After some quit outs, which is what, what that is interesting and something we do not actually understand fully yet, is after some quit outs, you do not get a stand up animation. So it means that the quit out basically loses almost no time. Uh, because the regular times on the leaderboard are actually timed by in game time, which cuts out load times to make it as fair as possible. Because they can vary depending on the machine. So down here, I'm going to be performing a pretty difficult skip down the Halic tree. I'm going to light this grace and I'm going to go ahead and bait an enemy. And instead of going through the uh, area, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go backwards where there's a shortcut. So there's a drop that I can do. I'm going to try to bait an attack. There, no, that's not the one. I need a roll. That's not a roll. I need to bait an attack so it goes on cooldown and it cannot do it. There we go. I'm going to bait the enemy towards the edge. I'm going to do a guard counter and I'm going to fall. That's pretty unlucky. <laughs> so I need to quit out and try to do it again. I'm relying on enemy AI for like any kind of a skip is always, you know, it's always unreliable. Let's, let's just put it that way. So let me go back. Let me rebait the enemy again. The skip is worth it. It looks pretty good. And again, I'm baiting out this roll attack because that's like one of the attacks that, you know, this skip is not really going to work with. And then I try to block whatever attack the enemy does and do a guard counter, which is basically pressing an R2 immediately after blocking. Hopefully break his stance like this. Go to the side, repost, and then we start falling. Nice. And we survive. That is so annoying to get sometimes. It is arguably the hardest skip in the game in terms of just being able to execute that with the randomness of that enemy. Uh, a lot can go wrong and, and it ends up just, you know, not saving time if you mess it up too many times. All right, so for Loretta, I'm going to approach her, uh, apply RKR, try to go to the side. She has a guaranteed opener. I'm going to tie my beam to hit her fully. I'm going to try to straight the follow up. It's an arrow attack. That's really good because I can get another beam. Get her low enough that she starts buffing, reapply RKR. She applies phalanx, but it's too late. Very nice. Good fight. That's good. That's good. So the skip that I did, um, the reason we can survive is because during the repost, which means just attacking the enemy while its stance is broken, you have iframes. You cannot get hit by like any other enemies or anything like that. And as I'm falling down, the iframes are activated in the moment where I touch the ground. So no full damage is dealt to me. Visions of Snake here as I'm taking this Bloodboard tier ladder. And I'm going to be approaching the next grace. I'll be taking the next grace because I need to return to it. And while I'm doing that, we can read a donation or two. All right. Well, this hype train is going so hard. We are now just about $125, $124,000 away from hitting that three mil mark. Keep it up, Twitch chat. Let's go. You guys better keep it up. If you want to see more GDQ. Keep going. We're in the end game, guys. All right, we have $50 from John that says, here's $5 for me and $45 for nine people who can't donate tonight. I got you. All right, so I take this grace. You can see that the Scarlet Road Knight is trying to get me. I mean, given the way our character looks, I'm not really surprised, but <laughs> I don't want to deal with her right now. So normally through the Halic Tree, you're supposed to run around in order to get all the way to the bottom. However, there's a pretty cool skip that I'm going to do here. I'm going to approach the elevator. I'm going to crouch, and I'm going to get the fourth intended death. I fall down, but my character, given the Giga Chat hey is, he weighs enough to drop on the elevator and activate it. <laughs> this is normally a shortcut that you're supposed to only activate from the bottom, like the lever next to it doesn't work. But through the way of our muscles, we were able to get the job done. And now I can just run back because I took the grace and get down the elevator. I'm going to repick my souls or runes, I should say. It's souls to me, damn it. <laughs> and I'm going to take the elevator down and I'm going to be approaching the, you know, infamous boss fight that I'm sure you guys know the way she is called. Um, I'm sure you've heard it enough times because I sure have. It's one of the most technical, probably the most technical fight of this run. So I'm going to try to do my absolute, you know, very best. I'm going to take this grace, though, because I wouldn't want to be running back if I die. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to start the fight by applying RKR, buffering it through the cutscene. Then I'm going to immediately roll to a very specific place and hopefully 
hit a very precise beam where she takes full full damage. That should be alright. 7,700 damage. There we go. Another beam. It should knock her down. Good. Another beam. She starts going backwards. Gave me a bad pattern, which means I have to actually wait a little bit before killing her. Here's the waterfowl uh, attack. You guys know that it's a pain in the butt to dodge, but we did it. Now I'm going to follow up with flames. So she's kind of chilling. I'm going to reapply RKR. I had to also drink FP because I've run out. One more flame and she's down. Okay, phase two starts. Heal up. She opens with an AoE. I apply RKR twice here. This is on purpose for timing because the second beam is going to hit specifically between her attacks where she can get staggered. She gets dropped on the ground. I do another beam and she goes for another AoE, which is good. That's really good RNG. I dodge it, outrun it, apply RKR and one and two and I am Catalyst and just soloed Melania. You can't ask for a better Melania at GDQ. That was super beautiful. Cool. Very nice. Cool. Very, 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 very cool. So now, finally, that I've killed Malenia, I have a remembrance, and I can get the second component to be able to do the Godskin Duo Skip, which is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to go back to Enya here. I'm going to retrieve the hand of Malenia from the remembrance, and we're going to go back to the Dragon Temple. I'm going to do a very cool looking skip. You guys are going to like this one. But first, I need to equip the hand of Malenia. I also, what you might have seen after I killed Malenia, I reordered my items by weight. This is to put the Devour Scepter right here and the Sword of Night and Flame one input next to each other. It's super important because it's going to allow me to swap from the Sword of Night and Flame to the Devour Scepter very quickly. I want to quit out next to this enemy because I don't want to deal with him. So we quit out to reset him to his default position. I'm going to do that one more time and get to the edge of the platform here. Now, normally you're supposed to kill the Godskin Duo and navigate all the way around to get to this big bridge. However, not only Torrent can fly. As I get back into the game, I'm going to do an R1. Out of that, I'm going to use L2, which is going to buffer it. And now, OK, well, that didn't work. <laughs> one second, OK, one second. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do an R1, then I'm going to use the stance, which is uh, L2. Ah. OK, one more time, third time's the charm. Then I'm going to use L2, as I said. That's going to buffer the stance, and I'm going to swap out the Sword of Night and Flame for the Devour Scepter, like this. And now, because the Devour Scepter has an Ash of War, very cool. Nice. Because the Devourer Scepter has an Ash of War that allows me to start moving, like you can move during it at the beginning. The Hand of uh, Malenia's skill, Waterfowl Dance, comes out, but it is glitched and I can walk on air for a bit, as you saw. However, because the Waterfowl Dance, as we're going to see in like three seconds, has several phases, I can just extend that walk by spamming L2 with the Waterfowl Dance and get all the way to the, side of the, to the other side of the bridge. Now, this skill is so busted that like, I'm just going to use it here to get out of bounds, literally by over, you know, getting over a railing. And instead of taking the elevator, I'm going to drop down here. Now, this is a kind of a weird jump that I did there. It was important to do it like that, because there's a death plane that I would hit if I just you know, went on the lower rooftop normally. And we're going to approach Placidusax, which is one of the more random enemies, one of the more random bosses in this run. And I'm always a little bit nervous, so hopefully it goes all right. I'm going to re-equip my items. The strat for Placidusax is essentially deal enough damage at the beginning to be able to stagger him and then kill him during the stagger. But I cannot deal too much damage or he's going to start transitioning into a second phase. In order to do that, I'm going to approach him, cast one beam without RKR, and he's going to start with a guaranteed uh, kind of a storm lightning opener. And I'm going to try to outrun it, apply RKR, then roll the lightning twice while attacking. And then depending on what attack I get, I might get a stagger or I might not get it. So we'll see. So he opens with the storm, like I said. I get close, first beam. Apply RKR. Roll. 
delay the second roll. That's a good attack. I roll behind him. Another one for the stagger. I need to replenish my FP now, because I need to do two more beams. I reapply RKR. While the dragon's on the ground, I deal extra damage. One and two. Beautiful. And that's Placido Sucks. That's a pretty big weight that dropped off my shoulder there. <laughs> but it's not over yet, because right now I'm going to be approaching Malekith. The end game in this run, or in this game in general, is quite a boss rush. So Malekith has basically two openers. He's more likely to start running at me, which is really good, because then I can bait an attack, um, dodge the follow-ups, and on the last hit of the combo, I can beam him in the face, which is really good. The worst scenario is that he doesn't run at me, and then we're going to have to deal with the fight a little bit more. So let's see what happens. Then a phase two is going to start, if everything goes all right. And phase two will also be kind of quick, hopefully. Apply RKR. Come on, run at me, bro. There we go. Bait that out. Get closer. Roll the follow-ups. He does an overhead. Beam in the face. Phase one, done. Second phase starts. Apply RKR. Go backwards. Roll over this, slight step to the right, another R1, and he's dead. Nice. Time for some quick donations. Yeah, yeah, go, go, go. We have $250 from 3 million hype. Hype. And they hype. say 3 million hype. 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 We also have $500 from Paul that says five from me and five for 99 others on me. Let's go, <laughs> 3 million. Thank you, Paul. And we're closing in, but we still have a ways to go. So get those donations in, folks. Absolutely. So after we kill Malekith, basically we kind of unleash the Destined Death. I don't know. I don't play these games for lore. I think 95% of people don't. They just want to go and smash some big bosses. Um, that basically, as you can see, burned the Earth Tree. However, before we can actually get into the Earth Tree, we still have some bosses to kill. And also, there's the incentive for the ending, which is going to be coming up somewhat shortly. I'll tell you when to end it. And after the boss fight of Godfrey, I'm going to need to know the ending. So that's uh, good to keep track of. And as you can see right now, what I have done is I have equipped the Loretta Sickle. This is a weapon that I got from Loretta, and it has a pretty good skill, which basically can generate some verticality for me. And that will be very useful for a skip coming up. Funnily enough, uh, one of the people who donated earlier, uh, Sir Gideon, the all-knowing, um, he's right here in this arena. You can actually see him. He's right there, chilling, okay? Ready to throw some books at me. However, it would be really fast to kill him, but he talks so much smack when he dies, it's actually faster <laughs> to go around and perform a skip to not have to deal with him. So I switched to the mouse and keyboard for this one. I'm going to be jumping up these slopes. And the sensitivity on this mouse is quite high, so it might take me a couple of tries. But I'm going to get to the corner of this tree. Get up here and get it first try. Very nice. So I basically jump into like some kind of a broken collision and then use the Loretta Sickle to get out of bounds on top of this building. Uh, Gideon is like run right underneath us, but this way we can just run past him. So we're going to be approaching Godfrey. I'm going to re-equip my shtick, my stuff. Here is the Sword of Night and Flame. I'm going to get back the Scimitar. And uh, as much as, you know, I want to get some fresh air, uh, I need to get back into these clothes. I'm going to go ahead and do some leveling here. I'm going to level up 18 mine. That is important so I can do two beams. And then uh, without drinking a potion, I can still summon wolves. And the rest goes into intelligence because, you know, I just, out of, I just outsmarted the all-knowing. So I think I deserve that. Um, Godfrey starts with a cutscene, but starting with the cutscene puts you to the center of the fight, and I don't really want to do that. I want to maintain some distance. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to enter the fight, skip the cutscene, and then quit out and re-enter it. That way I'm going to be re-entering it like right from the gray, uh, fog gate instead of spawning in the middle. After this fight is also when I am going to need to know the, uh, the winner of the ending incentive. As I re-enter the fight, I'm going to approach him, apply RKR, and then from a pretty specific place, at a pretty specific time, I'm going to do a beam, and hope that he opens, um, that I do it correctly, and he opens with an axe throwing attack. Well, I barely hit him, but it could still be fine. Roll it backwards, another beam, reapply RKR, and this one should hopefully end phase one. There we go. 
Walk backwards to get out of range of the grab, but attack him soon enough that I deal the damage before he starts transitioning. And as he starts transitioning, he's dead. Very clean. Very good. All right. Which ending is it going to be? All right, one final refresh, and then we'll get that result for you. And it looks like in the lead is going to be the Frenzied Flame ending. Okay. Oh, let's all go. right. Best ending for sure. I like that one a lot, yeah. So for this one, what I need to do is go through the three fingers, and there's actually, you're going to get to see some insane tech, right, that you normally wouldn't see in a run, which is pretty cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to warp back to the Deep root Depths here, and I'm going to perform a wrong warp. The wrong warp is actually going to take me like right past the illusory walls that are next to the uh, three fingers. And then I can use our good friend Pegasus to gain enough height and kind of backtrack through the illusory walls to get to the three fingers. It's very convenient because, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a really quick way to, to get that. I'm going to go ahead and do torrent storage right here. And as I do that, we can get some donations read. Great, sounds good. Well, we have $100 from Janky Manky that says, I can't believe we're so close to 3 million. Come on, let's hit it, Twitch chat. Let's hit it, guys. We also have $100 from Hillbilly Maze that says, you do have the right to donate. Let's get that bonus game, GDQ. And the trade is still going. This is amazing. Keep sending in those donations to close that gap so we can see any percent run right after this. We have $50 from Sphere Rebellier that says, 10 tickets for the train. Choo-choo. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Come on, Twitch chat. I believe in you. All right. So I got enough height there by abusing the geometry. And now I need to get naked in order to get accepted by the three fingers. Now, because this is part of the ending, we're going to go ahead and watch this cutscene. And as that's happening, we can read more donations and get closer to the three million. Awesome. Let's keep it going, chat. We have uh, $100 from That's a Nice Hat that says, this $100 is to be spent exclusively on ceramic glue to put Alexander back together. <laughs> We have $100 from Studio Zevier that says, three million hype. Hi. 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 We also have $250 from Black Noise that says, here's to another awesome GDQ. Keep those donations coming and let's help the doctors together. Together. <laughs> <laughs> let's do it, guys. Let's do it, Twitch chat. Come on, Twitch chat. Only $112,000 away from hitting that. Just keep those donations coming in and we'll get to see an epic run by Hypersomniac with any percent Elden Ring. You do not want to miss it. This run is absolutely incredible. The marathon has been going on for a week. I know that whenever I watched from home, I was always very sad at the end. And this is a way that you guys can extend the marathon, get one more amazing run in by someone who can actually play the game well, unlike me. And, you know, <laughs> also obviously donate towards a great cause. Some more donations can be read. All right, sounds good. <laughs> Woo! We have an anonymous $20 donation that says, any percent run of Elden Ring? Sign me up. Indeed, Anonymous, I would love to see that as well. We have $5 from Jarbochov that says, For ages, before the dawn of man, the $5 train has been a guiding light for Twitch chat. As it is written, as it is told, chew, chew. <laughs> <laughs> You guys got to keep it going. There's only two bosses left. It's not a lot. Just a couple minutes left, guys. Get those donations in. Yep. So I'm going to be approaching Radagon now, the second to last boss. And there's something cool that I want to show you. It might mean that I actually will have to redo the fight, but maybe not. We'll see. As I get flashbanged, as if I was rushing B on Dust 2, um, we're going to find out that Radagon is actually scripted to start walking towards you. However, if I get right next to him, that's the flashbang, uh, typical matchmaking. And as I get flashbanged, I'm going to go ahead and run immediately into him and then get out of the cone of his vision. And now, we're chilling. We are just chilling. <laughs> Look at him go. Look at him headbanging. <laughs> I mean, that OST is a banger, so that I mean, it's only natural that he's got the... We listen to that all day. I got the moves, yeah. 
So now applying RKR is probably gonna wake him up. I'm gonna try to do it in such a way to kind of stay out of range. Okay, he activated. Let's redo that. <laughs> the karma. Yeah. For disrespecting him. Well, he doesn't know what's coming. <laughs> He's mad because he was vibing, and then you just, you know, you yeah, tried to hit him with vibe, a yeah. beam. <laughs> All right, let's re-enter it again. Another rush to uh, dust to B side. I'm gonna get right next to him. I'm gonna apply RKR first before he finishes walking like this. Then I'm gonna walk around him. I'm gonna beam once. Yeah, he turns around. Well, that's very cute. I'm gonna go ahead and beam twice and he's gone. I'm gonna summon the wolves. This is super important. I'm gonna drink FP to have full FP and then I'm gonna run behind Elden Beast, the final boss of this run. I'm gonna beam to the side, position myself very precisely behind it, behind its leg, and between the wolves. Hopefully two wolves will go down. And this way, the Elden Beast AI gets broken. I reapply RKR, one more beam, and one last beam, and Elden Beast Full break, let's dead. go. All right, Twitch chat, come on, let's go. We're only $103,000 away. We're so close. We got the final cutscene, guys. 100K in the final cutscene. <laughs> <laughs> so that was, that was Elden Beast. Yeah, basically, you can break its AI. Time is going to be soon, by the way. Yeah, that, that doesn't feel good. This is what I'm going to do if we don't hit the 3 million. <laughs> <laughs> Time. GG's. Well done, Mr. Yeah. Kata. GG. Hey, underestimate with all the memes as well. Very <laughs> cool. So yeah, this is the Frenzy Flame ending. Um, the Elden Beast AI break isn't very well understood, but essentially something about having summons die in a specific way, um, and you being behind Elden Beast kind of confuses its targeting system, and it can cause an AI break. Um, there are partial and there are full AI breaks, um, with the Sword of Night and Flame, you deal so much damage that the partial one is enough to actually kill, but this time I got the full one. And this is, uh, yeah, the Frenzied Flame. That just looks so badass. Yeah, look like, like the Eye of Sauron. <laughs> badass. <laughs> it's the coolest ending for sure. <laughs> we should like slow the game speed down to like 10% yeah, right pull here. Up Just the <laughs> <real quick. laughs> pull up that trainer. Especially now that the timer is paused, so it's fine. <laughs> yeah, this game has like, what, five endings or something? Six endings? But some of them are just kind of reskins. They just look a little bit different. But this is a very, very unique one. So, you guys, uh, I'm getting flashbanged again. That's very cool. But, um,. <laughs> you guys put your money to, to the correct one for sure. This is a madness. <laughs> GG, Kata. Yeah, That's it. Great run. run. We beat Elden Ring, all remembrances, under two hours. There you have it. <laughs> I, uh, before we get off, I have a couple of things to get off my chest. Um, depends on uh, how long it takes to get to 3 million, I might have a lot of things to get off my chest. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to hear Kata's whole life story. Yeah. So, um, yeah, when I was a kid, um, <laughs> <laughs> I always dreamed of playing Elden Ring. <laughs> Back when From Software made Kingsfield, I knew that this game would come out one day for sure. <laughs> no, for real though, there are some shout-outs that I wanna that I wanna give. First, I wanna thank my wonderful commentators. It was a pleasure to have you here, guys. Thank you. It's been thank a pleasure you. to meet you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, guys. Yes. Hypersomniac, who wants to do his run? Haze Blades and Spicy, three legends. Thank you so much. There are also other people here in the venue that are from the Elden Ring family. Uh, Limcube, Lil Aggie. I would have loved to have you on couch, but there's unfortunately only three places. Hopefully next time, um, hopefully next time, everyone you know that I've mentioned has contributed tremendously to this game. And even though the game is only 
couple months old. As you see, there's so much tech that has been discovered because there's been so many people kind of gathering together, together and um, <laughs> working on it. And if you guys are interested in Elden Ring speedruns, or Dark Souls speedruns for that matter, or Bloodborne speedruns, the website you want to go to is www.speedsouls.com. It's the one-stop shop for speed in the Soulsborne series. Uh, it's a community wiki. We have a massive Discord, uh, bigger than, you know, 10,000 members at the moment. And we collaborate there on these games. Uh, as I said, what you've seen here is a collaborative effort of a lot of community members that just come together and they essentially just share a love for one video game and, and keep on working on it and, and keep on improving it. And the collaborative effort of, you know, that goes beyond or behind the scenes, <laughs> behind, behind like speedrunning is, is really what matters. And one last thing I want to say is that um, selfishly, this is, you know, one little dream come true for me. It's been a decade since I discovered speedrunning, thanks to Games Done Quick, as many of us probably have. And uh, three years ago, Three years ago, I had the pleasure and the privilege to finally perform here in the US on the grandest stage of them all. And now, three years later, I get to be part of the amazing finale and, and close it off with a, an amazing game in front of an amazing crowd behind me. It truly is a, a little dream come true. Um, there's a lot of us here, but you guys bet that I'm I'm just, you know, on cloud nine right now. I, I, I really enjoy performing in front of you guys. One last thing, again, selfishly, if you like Elden Ring speedruns, if you like Dark Souls 1 speedruns, you can follow me on, on Twitch or YouTube at Catalyst Z. I, you know, do these speedruns often and make videos about them, so you can check that out. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I think from me, this is pretty much it. I feel like I've talked enough. I need to get myself some water. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you again to GDQ for providing me with this opportunity and this privilege to sit here in front of you on the last day of the marathon. And of course, for putting everything together, I think the volunteers, the organizers, the staff, they deserve a round of applause because the work that they put in throughout the week is incredible. As the week goes on and, and some people are leaving, you know, the, the work rate that they have to put in, the hours, the sleepless nights, it's all for a great cause, and we are truly grateful to be part of something so, so special. I think it's really important to kind of realize how special Games Done Quick is, because we've raised so much money for such great causes. And uh, yeah, last thing, I love you guys. Thank you so much for being here, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you so much, Catalyst. What an incredible run of Elden Ring. And You did that! You did that! Everybody here did that! Every single dollar going to Doctors Without Borders! Thank you so much! This is incredible! And now we get to see Hypersomniac pop off! This is gonna be epic! I only have one thing to say! Go! How's that for being in jail? Incredible.